bad language, and trash talk from players and officials are common in NHL games. Whether it's Sidney Crosby yelling the word Detroit Red Wings television analyst Mickey Redmond responding to comments picked up by the on-ice level mics, or Dave Bolin trashing the Sedin twins during an interview. I think they might sleep in like bunk beds. <laughs> the older one has the bottom one, the younger one's got the top. The comments during games are only really heard if picked up by a hot microphone at ice level, or if a player or referee is mic. But these are the funniest hot mic moments in the NHL. Before we start, I just wanted to say that by far the most popular word on NHL rings is some derivative of the word fuck. Now, on to the fun part. As the Ottawa Senators, Eric Carlson is leaving the ice after a particularly long shift. Are you fucking kidding me? He's gonna go to the bench. And then there's this New York Rangers player who wants very badly for someone to sit down. And he hangs on to a 17.8 left. Then we have a series of various uses of fuck, with a referee even getting in on the action. Fuck you! Fuck you! In this next one, another penalty is called on the Detroit Red Wings in a game against the Los Angeles Kings. Detroit's analyst Mickey Redmond gets into the act as he answers a question that also includes the F word. But it's center for Nolan, carries into Detroit territory, number 71 for the Kings. There's a penalty here coming yeah. to the Red Wings. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, no, we're not kidding you. Uh. <laughs> and then the Toronto Maple Leafs' Cody Franson lets the F word fly as he's going to the bench at the end of a shift. More news from elsewhere here, James Duffy. After scoring this goal, the Vancouver Canucks' Zach Cassian is understandably fired up after he leads the celebration. And the Canucks celebrate a third goal and lead by two. In NHL games during the 2021 COVID shortened season, games were getting played in empty or near empty arenas. With no crowd noise, that made it a lot easier to hear what was being said on the ice and on the bench. And once again, it's the Red Wings here playing the Ottawa Senators. And guess who? It's Redmond. It's Redmond. This guy likes to swear. He's the king of swears, okay? He may not be a good hockey player, but at least he can swear, okay? This time, he comments on what the mic picks up on the ice. Oh, that's a nice way to have a Super Bowl we conversation. We apologize for what you may have just heard on our air. And from his response, it appears that this game was played on Super Bowl Sunday, just hours before Tom Brady won his seventh Super Bowl crown. And in this contest between the Pittsburgh Penguins and Vegas Golden Knights, someone feels quite strongly that someone else is acting immature, like a baby. I was able to make the save. Uh, Matt Murray coming off. Missing the last six games of a lower body diving. injury. Yeah. And then there's this. <laughs> One of the players on the bench yells to the two television analysts who are broadcasting from their space between the team's benches to look out as a puck just misses them. Stumped up to Cavallari, can't get anywhere. Look out, Razor, look out! Who's got it, Ray or McGuire? Well, McGuire, he's got that helmet on, so you want to make sure... The player then makes an editorial comment about one of the TV talking heads. Sure that it hits him. fucking <laughs> geek! <laughs> and then, there's frustration over being denied a goal. That moved the Columbus Blue Jackets' Jack Roslovic to yell, you know what? after he was stopped on a breakaway Roslovic cutting in on Vasilevsky made the save by Tampa Bay Lightning's goalie Andre Vasilevsky a player yells fuck so many times in this game between the Montreal Canadiens and Boston Bruins that the announcer chides him for it shoot the puck and his stick was checked Canadiens tried to break away and couldn't do it Now, now. And then there's this classic trash talking back and forth between the Chicago Blackhawks' Jeremy Roenick and the Colorado Avalanche's Patrick Wall during the 1996 playoff series. A back and forth R&R, &R, if you will, and not rest and relaxation. We're talking about Roenick and Wall. After being taken down on a potential breakaway, Roenick says it should have been called a penalty shot. And then Roenick brings up a goal that Wall had allowed in a previous game in the series. It should have been a penalty shot, there's no doubt about it. Um, I like Patrick's quote that he would have stopped me. I just want enough 
just want to know where he was in game three. He's probably getting his jock out of the stands on the, out of the Raptors United Center, man. And of course, Wall's response has something to do with the Stanley Cup rings he's worn with the Canadians in 1986 and 1993 being in his ears. I can't really hear what Jeremy says because I got my two Stanley Cup rings plugged in my ear. <laughs> Colorado won that series four games to two and would go on to win's third Stanley Cup. Fast forward to December of 2011 when another Chicago Blackhawks center, this time Dave Boland, had a few non-too kind words to say about the twins Henrik and Daniel Sedin to the Vancouver Canucks during an interview on Chicago's WGN radio. Welcome back, Chicago Blackhawks 4. David Bolin has had a hostile history with Sedin Brothers, and he held nothing back on Chicago radio station. Listen to this. In addition to calling them the Sedin sisters, Bolin said they'll never become Hawks. I think you see what happened with the Sedin sisters. If the Sedins become Hawks, will they still be sisters? <laughs> well, they'll never become Hawks. And I don't think we let them on our team. That'd probably be one thing. Bolin also trashes the city of Vancouver by saying, In Vancouver for sure, like, like, there's a lot of weirdos there. And I agree, but that's, that, that's aside the point, okay? That's, uh, when you have uh, comments like Bolin, I mean, obviously a, an individual whose uh, IQ is probably the size of a bird seed, and he's got a face that only a mother could look at. Canucks coach Elaine Vigneault equated the size of Boland's IQ to that of a bird and that Boland has a face only a mother would love. And Vancouver Canucks defenseman Kevin Bieska chimed in by saying that Boland didn't want the Sedin twins on his team because then Boland would be out of a roster spot. Probably true. He wasn't that good. And of course, at the end, Boland tried to downplay his comments. What a loser. I have the utmost respect for the Sedin twin, Elaine Vigneault, and all the Vancouver Canucks. It was just a little bit of tongue-in-cheek we had at a little radio show with the fans. I've got the utmost respect for Vancouver and what they do on the ice and how they do it. Now we're looking at Toronto Maple Leafs' Austin Matthews. He uses it a couple of times here after missing the net on a breakaway. And he rifled that just wide. Now let's take another look at Sid the Kid. One of the game's greatest players, surely. But some think he's been treated almost like a god since coming up into the league. But here, after missing a scoring opportunity, it seems he yells fuck just like everyone else. Hang on to it. At least, I mean, come on, fuck is not that bad, right? Referee emphasizing his explanation for a penalty with the F word. Oh my gosh. Fuck you. And he's not looking at the ref, but he he voiced his opinion there. Now, we come to an incident that happened during the 2021 COVID-shortened season in March. In a game between the Nashville Predators and the Detroit Red Wings. After calling a penalty against Nashville's Victor Arvidsson, referee Tim Peel was caught on a hot mic saying that he wanted to give Nashville a penalty even before Arvidsson committed the infraction. Peel even admitted that the penalty wasn't much. It wasn't much, but I wanted to get a fucking penalty yeah, against Nashville early in the Peel was immediately fired and banned from the league. And then, there's more of the F word. Come on! Can't you guys at least be original? Next again uses fuck, but at least a play-by-play -play announcer answers with I don't know. Here she sends one across. Now we go to a much happier moment where the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup in 2018. In an on-ice interview, their captain Alexander Ovechkin is asked what the fans should do to celebrate. Okay, quickly, anything you want to say to any of your fans? Fans, we did it. Get some beers, get some whatever, <laughs> and start celebrating. We're the Stanley Cup champions! In another interview, Juicy Markkinen, apparently tongue firmly in cheek, defends Chris Pronger for wanting to leave the Edmonton Oilers after playing there for only one season. And I'm not gonna lie, I would leave, I wouldn't even go there. If they asked me for a contract, I would say no. Never! Absolutely not. Goodbye, have a good day, thank you. The Edmonton Oilers general manager Kevin Lau said the request was due to personal reasons. And yeah, I would actually have personal reasons too. In fact, I hate the team so much I would never want to go there. 
and media outlets also reported that Pronger's wife Lauren was not happy in Edmonton. Good on you, you found a good wife. If you were a big hockey fan, particularly a big Oilers fan back in those days, you probably heard rumors that there was a particular reason why Lauren Pronger wanted them out of there. Despite the fact that Pronger had led the surprising Oilers to a Stanley Cup final in 06 where they lost in Game 7 to the Hurricanes, Pronger got his wish and was traded to the Anaheim Ducks. Pronger was the final piece for the Ducks who won the Stanley Cup the following season. Veteran NHL coach John Tortorella is known for being brutally honest during his interviews. Whether his response is uncomfortable, antagonistic, or funny, it is generally always memorable. In this case, while he was coaching the New York Rangers, he is quite antagonistic towards the New York Post writer Larry Brooks, who gives it right back to Torts. Should one of their guys have taken the third man in? I'm not going to answer any questions from you. You're not? No. Oh, good. Yeah. I'll speculate. You speculate and be as, be as sarcastic as you I can will. be, as you usually oh, I are. I will. Go right ahead. Good. Did, uh, should one of you guys be taking the third man in? I said I'm not taking your an answering any of your questions. No. Have you ever fought before? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Why? Are you challenging me now? No, no, I'm not okay. challenging you. Okay. You know, Red Redden, Redden sticks up for his teammates the other night. Yeah. And you come come out with some sarcastic article. It was funny. It was funny. Yeah. Well, you know what? You were probably beat up in the bus stop most of the time. I think so, huh? <laughs> Next. The late fight. second period goal. Even it's a you're a great representative of, of the city. You know that? Will you let these other guys, just go stand okay. somewhere else, no, would you please? No, I won't. Next, the Tampa Bay Lightning defenseman Dan Boyle tells a media member exactly what he thinks of it and tells the individual and another person to get out of the team's dressing room. What's feelings you? Perfect, perfect. I want you out of here. Nobody likes you, nobody respects you. And then there's a back and forth between them. Well, I can can tell you to get the out if I want to. Politely. Why would I be polite with you? Are you kidding me? No, oh, just leave. I just don't. I, we don't need. <laughs> Speaking of media sessions that just don't go too well, there's always this one featuring Phil the Hot Dog Man Kessel when he was a member of the Leafs. Kessel's availability ends prematurely after he has issues with one of Toronto's media members. You're a difficult guy to coach. You know, that's a weird question for you to ask, so... This guy's such an idiot here. And when the Maple Leafs PR person tries to lead Kessel away, he and the media member continue bickering. Tell me bad articles have you. I don't see any of these other guys disrespect. To sum it all up, we got a little comedy here. We're talking about the flower. We ain't missing him. Okay, let's go. Back when Mark andre Fleury was still a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins, he and Max Talbot do a little skit for the media, with Talbot acting as Fleury's interpreter. Why start now? Uh, man. Now it's time. <laughs> Both are French Canadian, but Fleury has never had problems speaking and understanding English. Just a couple of teammates breaking the tedium of a long NHL hockey season, I guess. I think we've played well. It was so that when we scored, when we scored a goal, we came and we scored even more. So we kept the tempo until the end. I thought we played pretty good. Uh, you know, the guys kept kept scoring, and I just made the big saves. That's what I said. So there you have it. The funniest hot mic moments in history. Which one do you think was the funniest? You can leave a comment about it if you like, and click the video right here to watch the most disrespectful moments in the NHL. If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.